Carl Crawford with Floyd and Deonna Navarro to face Gavin Floyd. He's got a couple of blemishes so far in the resume today, and it's all about B.J. Upton. Homered off him in the first, homered off him in the third. That has been it. Crawford grounded out to second base, first time up. He's 0 for 1. Well, in the five hitter, Carl Crawford comes up and he fakes a bunt. How often do you see that from the five hitter? And this is what you were talking about earlier. The versatility of Crawford hitting in that five spot. And how often does that happen where the fifth guy in the order leads off an inning? It happens quite a bit. And that's a little thing that Joe Madden sits back and thinks about as he's making his lineup out. I mean, look at the White Sox order. They got Paul Canerco hitting fifth in their order. Right. Quite a difference. difference between Paul Canerco and Carl Crawford, and especially with the running ability of Crawford. He takes ball three, and it's now three and one. It was an interesting choice because you're so used to seeing him at the top of the order. When they reinserted him, you kind of wondered where he would end up in this lineup. He bats fifth and so far 0 for 1 today. Takes ball four and the dangerous Carl Crawford is on the base pass. Well as a hitter what happens in that situation is you're asking the umpire for time and you don't leave until he verbally gives it to you. So you have to stay there and be ready to hit. Now you might be talking but you, if the minute you start to physically leave that pitch may still be alive. Boyd fights it off foul. He really has been the veteran presence for this Tampa Bay Rays team. It is a young squad, the youngest team in the postseason, fourth youngest in the majors, and they have relied heavily on Cliff Floyd. Joe Madden has all season long for his veteran leadership. You need to have it. Uh, just the fact of going through slumps, going through a long 162 game schedule. I remember a couple years back, the before they changed the, the staff and ownership and everything else there are a few teams in Tampa that never had anybody even on the coaching staff who had major league experience so you have to have that for somebody to tell you this is what it's like to go through 162 games. He's won a World Series in the Marlins in 1997 prior to the 2006 Mets 2007 Cubs both participating in the postseason then there before back there again this time with the Rays. Well, it's interesting the veteran presence for Cliff Floyd, Mark Fine. It's been fun to watch for him, but definitely the elder statesman of this Rays team. Yeah, you know, he reminds his teammates. He was with Chicago last year, a team that got swept by Arizona. And he says, guys, it can be done. I was there and saw it happen. He said, didn't have a team meeting or anything, but over dinner in the clubhouse, let him know about his experience. There were a couple of times during the season when the race started to get down a little bit. Some losing took place. They slipped out of first place at the All-Star break to the Red Sox. And for teams in the past, it might have been, here we go again. This is where we start to fade. But it's guys like Cliff Floyd who stepped up in that clubhouse and didn't do it loudly, but did it enough so everybody was aware they were getting back on track again. And they did. And a very big second half. And, and I was going to say, nothing greater than performance to help you do that either. On the right field line, foul ground as Ramirez and Canerco head over, but it's well back into the seats. Fourth postseason appearance. I mentioned the World Series champion, Florida Marlins, back in 97. I think Carl Crawford's got a tremendous lead, and you might see him run in this situation. And, and sometimes for Cliff Floyd, who's used to hitting in the or bot in the middle of an order he's not used to having guys running but you saw the timeout already and, and Gavin Floyd the slide step quick pitching him to the plate those are things that he has to make the adjustment to and the, as they try to shut down the running game of Carl Crawford on first base but Cliff Floyd has seen more fastballs in this at bat because Carl Crawford is on base than any other time I'm sure in his career hitting in the sixth spot. Spends that lead a little bit at first base. Well, the check swing in the 2 2. Did he go? They'll check no, says Joe West, third base umpire. And the count is full, 3 and 2 to Floyd. 
Well, he's going to be off and running right here, and I, I think it's going to be interesting as you, you get a look at the check swing here. But I think with this situation, it's going to get real interesting. He went a long ways, but he was, that's such a tough call. I don't know exactly how to read that. But here's the interesting pitch. There's a lot of things happening 3-2 here because I think Floyd should just go ahead and lift his leg and make a good pitch because you're not going to throw Crawford out. He's running regardless. If he slide steps, you have a tendency not to put as much on your pitch. You may hang a breaking ball, or you might not have as much on your fastball, and you'll get hurt by that guy at the plate. You're not going to throw Crawford out. You concede that. It's not going to happen. But I do not want this guy at the plate to beat me with a ball in the gap or out of the ballpark. There goes Crawford, the 3 2. He swung on and fouled off at the dish. Crawford was indeed off on the 3 2 pitch. Well, the bullpen is busy. Both Russell and Richard are up. We have seen Clayton Richard, of course, has started some games this year for the White Sox and gave a few innings down in Tampa Bay earlier in this series in St. Petersburg. People were running on Floyd. Holden stole 15 bases over his last 12 starts. None were caught over that span. There goes Crawford as Floyd drives it into left field. A base hit. And it one hopped the wall. Crawford had stopped at second base. Now gets to third and beyond. He's going to try and score. The throw from Cabrera is not in time. Ball gets away. And Floyd will take third base as Tampa Bay goes on top three to nothing. Red Sox will now bring that infield in all the way around. With Floyd at third base, and it's lined over the outstretched glove of Alexei Ramirez into right field. From third comes Floyd, and the Rays are on top, four to nothing. DHL presents MLB Delivery Man as the pitching change. Our second look at Clayton Richard in this series. I want to remind fans to go to MLB.com to cast your vote for the 2008 DHL presents MLB Delivery Man of the Year. Navarro at first base held on by Kennard goes Gabe Gross swings at the first pitch and fouls it off. Well, this crowd which was so exuberant to begin the day is very quiet now as the Rays have silenced them tacking on two more runs here in the fourth inning. Well it's the way in which they've done it too. You got the big home run ball from Upton and then that last sequence of plays that's enough to put people the silence real quick. Rose takes the strike and he's down 0 and 2. Well, Richard threw the ball real well in Tampa the other day. He's got a fastball slider, a change, a sink that, and cut it in. And uh, he threw the ball great when he came into Tampa. Give him a nice stretch and gave them an opportunity to stay in that ball game. He went three and a third with five strikeouts in his postseason debut. That was game one of the ALDS. Now you might be wondering, well, they got a platoon system in Tampa with Gross and Baldelli. How come you're not pitch hitting? Because it's so early in the game, you're going to get back to those right handers in the bullpen. You've got Dotel down there and Jenks, and if the game came back down to that, you want to have Gross still in the ball game as long as you possibly can. Well, Gavin Floyd walked Carl Crawford to begin the inning. Cliff Floyd able to double to third on throw as he knocked in a run that a single for Navarro with the infield in. Now Gross left side to Cabrera. He'll go to second for one on the first base. They turn the double play. The White Sox needed that. And there's two down here in the fourth. Well, and that's a tough turn. Great footwork by Alexi Ramirez out there because the ball hit to the left side with the third with the left-handed hitter. He was playing Gross more to pull. So he's going to get to the bag a tad bit late. Nice feed by Cabrera, but what's the arm strength right here? That is a laser. He throws over to first base to turn that ball over. So two outs here now in the fourth inning, and Jason Bartlett coming up. Reached on a fielder's choice his first time up. Loops one to shallow right center field, falling fast as Griffey will dive in center field and make the catch. Junior still can get it done as he comes on from center to make the grab. Two runs for the Rays. It's 4-0 Tampa Bay.